Okay, I think that's good. That should work fine. Let me get it all pulled up here. Make sure sound is working and all that. Sound appears to be working. And it is wonderful. Alrighty. Let's get everything else set up here. All right. Good. So today I'm going to be painting the dusk back or dust back helamites from the new Necromunda Ash Wastes uh, box. Uh, this box was not given to me for free. This is my local game store's display copy that we plan to have out on release day to show it off. Just get that out of the way first so no one is confused about how I have it early. Um, we're just going to get right into it. And the first paint is going to be Nasdrag Yellow. And this is going to be for the bug itself. I didn't get my brushes out before the stream started. Amateur hour. There we go. Alright. Now we can move on to Nasdrag Yellow. Um, I primed this miniature with sort of a chestnut brown color. And then uh, Zenithalled it with Wraithbone. So that's how we that's how we came to this sort of two-toned color scheme here. And this guy is kind of wiggle wobbly uh, because he's just tacked on before I add the base. Um, I might though I might glue this other foot down just so he's not wiggling all over the place as I'm painting him. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm just putting this Nasdrag yellow all over uh, the bug. Basically everywhere except this carapace here. I'm going to do this carapace in a different color. I don't know exactly what color yet, but I just know I want it in a different one. So, And on these big flat surfaces here, we just want to be making long strokes with the contrast paint, as always. So we don't... Or we minimize any uh any chunky surfaces or splotchy surfaces or anything like that make sure we get in between all these ropes and stuff on him nasdrag yellow is a i would put it in one of the darker contrast paints but it is still light enough that most of the other dark contrast paints will apply over it without any problem. So, for instance, this wood, if we get a little bit of this on there, that won't be a big deal. Any of our normal wood colors will cover right over that, no problem. Um, I generally like to work lightest to darkest with contrast paint, just for that exact reason, so you can just paint over them if you need to. Um, in this case, this isn't probably the probably isn't the lightest contrast paint we'll use, but it's a you know big surface on the miniature, and it's relatively well separated from the rest of the miniature. Um, in the sense that like the guy is on, up on top of it, not kind of intermingled with this color, so I think we're safe to start here and, uh, and go from there. And then stuff like this is going to be like these three things here. That's all going to be metallic. So I'm not super worried about uh, about that kind of stuff. Because obviously I'll be painting over it with metallic paint, not contrast paint. I'm trying to 
trying to decide if I want to do the full carapace here all the way down in a different color or if I just want to do this upper part. I think I'm going to do the whole thing in a different color. I haven't quite decided yet though. I'm going to finish painting all the rest of the yellow here and then decide after that. These guys do have a lot of nooks and crannies. Just making, I'm just making sure to get all the way into all of them. Um, the brown primer we use, though, underneath the Zenithal of Wraithbone can help us with that quite a bit. Because if people look in, if it was just Wraithbone and you looked in and you saw like Wraithbone sticking out in there, it would be obvious. But if you look in there and just see a dark brown, you're not necessarily going to be able to exactly tell what you're looking at and not be able to tell that you're looking at primer. So, that besides the fact that we wanted it for the, the undertones of the yellow, it can also help us in hiding any mistakes we make and forgetting to paint something. So there's the bug done. And I think I am going to do this entire carapace here in a different color. And I don't know if this is going to work, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to try to do it in a green. Um, bit of a side tangent here. I've been experimenting, deciding what I want to paint the new Horus Heresy box set in, whose Legion colors I want to do. Um, and I think I've settled on Sons of Horus after a couple of uh, test tries. And so I did a Sons of Horus test model the other day. And I really like how this color came out. And I think I just want to do this color on the carapace there. Might look a little weird and maybe more colorful than it should be for the, the ash wastes, but I don't care. I think it'll look cool. So that's just simply Coelia Green Shade, the uh, shade from Citadel. Um, this will look a little different than this. This was primed black and then Xenithald with Wraithbone, whereas this, like I said, was primed brown and then Xenithald. So it will come out a little different. But I think that's okay. Um, we want a warmer tone for this guy anyway. So just like with contrast paint, when we're applying this on a large flat surface, we want to be making large strokes, trying not to stay in one place too long. We don't want it to get all splotchy. Another benefit of this, of this shade is that it's pretty light. So almost any contrast paint we use over this, like if we get some on the, the rider's robes here, almost any of the contrast paints will just go right over this, no problem. Obviously the super light ones won't, like, you know, Apothecary White or Skeleton Horde, Golem and Flesh, that sort of thing. But all the main heavy pigmented ones will do just fine over it. I think I'm going to do the rider's robes in um, snakebite leather, so that should be fine. I'm not sure exactly what that is, if it's part of the carapace or if it's like rope or something. I don't really know, but I'm just going to paint it green for now. I'm going to do that on the other side as well, just in case. I'm going to make sure to get all of the carapace here. Down in any nooks and crannies I missed. On the back side of this here. That one's good. All right, I think. A little bit more in there. I think that is all of it. And I do like that color combination. I got a little bit of the screen over here on the yellow. I'm just going to flood the area with some water. And it comes right off, no problem. All right, so that's the bug with them two main colors done anyway. Um, let me just 
make sure we're still running here. And we are good. Okay. My stream was doing funny things on my screen, so I just wanted to make sure nothing hinky was going on. Double check. One more thing here. There we go. Okay. So, I think the next thing we're going to do is probably the robes of the guy, just because it's a, another big surface on this guy. Try to knock out the big surfaces first. I'm just going to pull up what they look like in the box art. I think they're kind of like a tan sort of cream, off cream color. Yeah. So maybe I'll just use Skeleton Horde. We'll see. We'll start with Skeleton Horde. Almost anything goes on Skeleton Horde, over Skeleton Horde if we don't like it. So we'll start with Skeleton Horde and see where we go from there. think what I'm going to notice is this is going to look a little too close in color to the skin of the creature, but we shall see. Also to get some green up here after, after saying we're not going to use a light contrast paint on this area, I decided to use a light contrast paint, so... We can maybe fix that later. Um, I think I might add a coat of Null Oil over this Skeleton Horde as the final color of these robes. And so that will, uh, that will hide that green that I got on here earlier. I'm just going to paint all the way up to the uh, gloves here and all the way down to the boots. Those will end up being a different color, but just in case I forget a spot, at least now they won't be bare primer showing. Get this other one. Good. Not sure exactly what this is, so I'm just going to paint it in the same color. I think it's probably made of metal, some sort of piece of armor or something. So we'll paint that accordingly, but for now, it'll just be that. And then I'm just going to paint the chest and the head as well. There we go. That ought to do it. So then we need to decide on a color for these guys, like a representative color, um, because they have these back banners. In the box art, they're just brown, which I think is kind of boring. Like, everything on these guys is brown. I get it. They're out in the ash wastes. But still, I think a little bit of color could be cool. Um, I think I'll go with red. I was going to go with blue, but I think blue will detract from the carapace color. Uh, so I'm going to do red. Red is always kind of my go-to color if you need a you need like a color color. You don't want to clash with other things unless the main color of the creature or the dude is red. Then just go with red. And uh, this is Blood Angels red contrast paint. If I didn't say that, one of my favorite contrast paints. It goes on so smoothly. No fuss at all. And, of course, cloth like this is one of the greatest things for contrast paint. It really helps hide any of the downsides of contrast. So, this red will look even better on this. Good. So then... We've got some wood, or possibly metal, scattered around here. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to do the reins in this red as well. The reins that go down and attach to the 
spike here. I'm going to do them in red. And as always, we're just going for tabletop quality here. Nothing super insane. I'm sure there'll be a couple mistakes on here. And I won't go back and fix them. And if that upsets you, I am sorry. But I just can't be bothered to go back and fix some things when I'm just trying to get miniatures on the table. And I'm trying to paint a thousand miniatures this calendar year. So. I'm just trying to go for tabletop. Anything beyond that. Probably not going to happen very often. Alright. That's nice and done. Now I think I'm going to grab my other leather color. Which is going to be Gore Grunta on this miniature. Gore Grunta fur right there. And this is going to be for all the other supplementary leather um, or bindings, things like that. So, I'm probably going to do my smaller brush for this. So, this stuff here, I'm going to do that in this color. You know, I've been looking at this, and I thought this was like wood or something, but I'm starting to think it's metal. There may not be wood on this guy. It may just all be metal. Which I guess would make sense. There probably aren't too many trees around in the ash wastes. They've probably all been turned to ash. So, I think we will paint it accordingly. I'm going to get this guy's gloves, though. And then the bindings back here. Um, and a trick for you, if you're if you're using Gorgranta fur and you realize that something like this, uh, you went over it in a contrast color that it won't cover up, grab yourself some Mornfang brown and paint over the spots that are supposed to be Gorgonta fur, and it will look almost identical. Um, alternatively, you can paint it with Mornfang Brown and then go over it with Gorgonta fur, and then it'll look even closer. I typically find that just the one Mornfang Brown coat is sufficient. So this guy has some belts going around him. I'm going to grab those while I'm here. Grab his other boot. Actually, I don't know if I did his first boot. I did his arm. I may not have done his boot. There we go. Oh, his other boot was kind of wet from uh, the skeleton horde still. We can always come back to that if I need to and tidy it up. Get the other side of his belt here. His face wrapping... Just that part? No, the bottom part also, I think. And then we're going to do the face. I'm not sure, to be honest, if this is supposed to be like an alien's face or if it's a mask. Um, because it's the ash wastes and I think you should be wearing a mask out on the ash wastes, I'm going to paint it like a mask. And if it turns out that it's supposed to be an alien's face... Feel free to yell at me in the comments. I won't change anything about it if you do, but you'll feel better. I'll grab these. Oh yeah, there's bindings up here. Yeah, I'll do those in Mornfang in a minute. 
Tools. All right, I think that's all of that. So now, like I said, I'm going to grab some Mornfang Brown, which is a layer paint. And paint over the stuff that Gorgontifar wouldn't cover, cover over. So, for instance, these, uh, these red bits up here. This guy is bouncing around. I only tacked them on because I don't know how I'm going to do their bases yet, and I figure it's going to be a bunch of texture paint and stuff, and so I'm going to pop them back off the base, do the base, then glue them back on. But uh, it does mean he bounces quite a bit while I'm painting him. But that's okay. I'll just paint in these. And so now you can see... You can tell the difference close up, but Mornfang and Gorgonto from three feet away, I would challenge someone to be able to identify exactly where Gorgonto was used and Mornfang was used. Alright, oh, there's a couple little bindings right here. We could have actually used Gorgonto for this, but since Mornfang's out, I'll just grab them in Mornfang, no problem. There we go. Any on the other side? Yep. It does have some on the other side. Perfect. All right. Then, I know that obviously I've got metal to do still, but I want to try to get everything else that isn't metal, or rather that is contrast, out of the way first. And I think I'll start, or continue, I'll use some Black Templar and just black out the eyes of the creature here. So these big bug eyes. Grab them. Good. And the other one. Good. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever painted a bug like this before. So I'm kind of winging it. Uh, I don't know exactly what colors to do for things, but, you know, that's the case a lot of times with painting, so. What will I do next? I still have the metal. I understand I still have the metal. I just don't know exactly... I don't want to start on the metal until the contrast is done. So. But it may be time for that. Yep. All right. We'll pop the metal on. Uh, for that, I'm going to start with. With. Get my, get my future projects out of the way. Some Blood Bowl things. They are hiding some paint. At least I hope. Somewhere. There's a scale 75, black metal. Oh, I know where it is. I gotta walk to the other desk real quick. My niece was using it. And it is no longer on my desk. Got it. So we're gonna use some scale 75, black metal. Um, if you don't have this, or if you just want a Citadel equivalent, uh, the Citadel equivalent is Iron Warriors. Get my little palette out here. And just put a little dollop out. I know using a bottle on my series called Straight from the Pot is kind of uh, sacrilegious, but it is what it is. We're just going to have to go for it. So I'm going to paint in the full um, lance here first. Um, and this is just because it's sticking to one of my core principles when painting is that you never know when you're just going to want to be done with the project. You might you might get started and you're really ambitious and you're like, "All right, I'm going to, you know, I'm really going to work through this and paint all the little tiny details and it's going to be awesome." And then you get a couple hours in and you're like, "Man, I really wish I could just be done." 
and just go play a game with it. And so, for instance, I know these cables are going to be a different color. I know some of this detail is going to be a different color. But if I paint it, if I just paint around all those things, don't paint the, them silver, and then, you know, maybe in 20 minutes, my cat knocks over a vase or something. Uh, or, you know, whatever. I decide I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Or whatever. Maybe I'm just bored of painting this guy. If I don't have the those things a color, the prime with the primer just showing through, next time I come back to that miniature, I don't have a miniature I can paint or I can play with if I want to play with fully painted miniatures, which I generally do. However, if you block in all this stuff with silver first, even if you know you're going to come back and paint it a different color later, if your cat knocks over a vase in 20 minutes, or you decide you want to go to bed, or whatever, the next time you come back to this miniature, he'll be, quote-unquote, done. He will have paint on all the major surfaces. He won't have any primer exposed, or anything like that. And then, you know, if you're friend calls you up and was like, hey, let's play a game of Ash Wastes. Is your army done? You can be like, yeah, it's done. Here I come. I'll see you in 20 minutes. Um, whereas, if you had left those pieces to be painted later, you wouldn't have a painted army. And, you know, nothing stops you from just coming back an hour, two days, a month, a year later, and just continuing to paint over him. As long as you're not apply applying paint like a baboon, and you're applying it thin enough, which, as you can see, I'm just painting straight out of the bottle or the pot, um, so that is plenty thin enough for me, um, then you can always just come back and layer over the top of it. But until then, you can have your nice painted miniatures. Probably less relevant for Necromunda, um, but for 40k, you know, you get 10 points out of your 100 for having a fully painted army. So if you're going to spend 25 hours, or whatever, 50 hours, working on a, a tank, well, that's awesome. It's going to look freaking sweet when it's done. But if you don't base coat it all out first, you're going to lose those 10 points for every game you play until it's done. Whereas, if you base coat it first... Get all, like, the silver, the red, the black, whatever, blocked in. Your army color, whatever that is. Then you can play every game with uh, with scoring those 10 points. Yep, he's fully painted. He's got paint on every surface. He's not just primer. He's ready to go. And then you can still spend those 50 hours locking that guy in and making him look sweet. But that's just my opinion. I know some others will disagree. That's perfectly fine. But those 10 points are precious to me. I am I'm always very sad when I decide I'm going to play a list where I will not be earning those 10 points. I know some people um, will say that those 10 points is kind of a tangent, but you know, whatever. I'm just blocking in silver. I feel like a tangent is fine for blocking in silver. Um, some people say those 10 points are like hobby gatekeeping or whatever. And while it, technically they are correct, it is a form of gatekeeping. What I have described by just blocking in whatever you want, or blocking in your base colors, that is such a low barrier of entry if you have already passed the biggest barrier of entry, which is affording an army, then base coating some miniatures should not be too much of a challenge for you. And, you know, there's nothing wrong when you're learning and you're first painting your army. You might lose those 10 points a couple times. Guess what? You're probably not going to be losing games because you didn't paint your army when you're first starting out. You're going to be losing games because everyone's going to be better than you. And then probably by the time that you've gotten pretty good at the game is probably about the time you'll have your army fully base coated out. And then you'll be earning those 10 points, and then some of your games might start being decided by those 10 points. And then you might start winning games by 50 points. And, you know, so it all goes hand in hand. So 
I think, well, technically it is... It is a form of gatekeeping. You do have to pass this gate to gain these points. I don't think it's actually that negative for the community. I think hobbying should be a big part of it. But if you just want to do the simple way, I think that should be available to you as well. And then, of course, there's always commissions. So... You, uh, if you want to have someone else paint your army, that can be a way around the hobby aspect as well. Because I, I'm sure there are people who only like to play the game and they don't like to paint. That's fine. If you don't want to paint, I suggest you not do it. But I do think that hobbying is an important part of the game and the hobby. And so if you want to have someone else paint your army, that's absolutely fine. And, you know, I say that as someone who paints commissions relatively often. Like, so I'm pretty biased. Send me your miniatures. I will paint them for money. I might even paint them on stream for money. Because I don't have a lot of time in the day. Alright, I think we're almost done blocking in silver. I think my painting rant can end. Not, I mean, I, I use the word rant, but... I feel like I'm, I'm not really saying anything unreasonable here. I think even if someone disagrees with me, they will be able to see where I'm coming from. Okay, I think that's all our silver blood. Uh, nope. Just this entire half of the pillar here. The back banner. Strut. I don't know what you'd call this. The flagpole? Whatever you call that thing, I didn't finish painting it. There we go. That's good. Alrighty. Make sure this brush is nice and rinsed. You gotta always double and triple check your paint brushes after metallic paints. You don't want that mica getting stuck to or in your bristles. We'll ruin a brush very quickly. So, what are we going to do next is the question. I guess I'll move on to my second metallic paint. And I think I'm going to use some of this Necro Gold from Scale 75. Uh, this doesn't really have an equivalent in Citadel. I'll be quite honest with you. Um, that's why I'm using the Scale 75 one. Iron Warriors works well for black metal that we just used. This, though... Um, I'm not really aware of a of an analog, so. But I mean, you don't really need to copy this paint scheme identically. I'm flattered if you do. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of just any old gold will do, right? You could also do brass, obviously, or bronze, something like that. I think I just like the look of this gold a little bit more. Blocked in. No cable housing on this side. Okay. And then let's see about... I'm going to paint this entire mask in this color. And then I'm going to come back and put a contrast paint over that gold in a minute. I think that sounds like a plan. Alright, so now I'm going to grab some... I think Reichland Flush Shade. Yeah, we'll go with Reichland Flush Shade. Um, as soon as I do one thing here, pause. That can that paint can dry for a second anyway. That's fine. Um, I just need to do one quick thing. Body blah blah blah. Okay. Good. So, Reichland Flush Shade. All these things that are like the uh, the talons or you know, they might be made out of like a bony material or whatever on this guy. We're just going to paint these in with Reichland Flush Shade just to differentiate them just a little bit. 
from the rest of him. So he's got like this skin, but then he's got these protrusions that are the business ends of his of his uh, body. And I'm going to do that on this big horn here too. Just going to go around getting all this stuff. And this is just it's a slightly different color, so it has some distinction, but not crazy different. So not to look unrealistic. I mean, of course, he is a giant alien creature. He could be unrealistic for Earth standards and still be perfectly fine, but... Alright, I think that'll do for that. We might need to do a different color, because it might not show up that well. Uh, on, on camera, it really doesn't look that different. In person, it looks more different than that. But we still may need to come back and grab it with a different color later. We shall see. Uh, now, I'm going to grab the black again. Black Templar, specifically. And I'm going to do the blade here in this color. There we go. Just like that. And now I'm just going to go around the miniature looking to see what else we can do in black. And you know what? I said I was going to do this mask in gold and a contrast later. I'm going to do it in black. I think I like that. The, uh, the masks being in black. I'll probably come in and put some paint the eye lenses with some color. Maybe blue. Um, I'm also going to paint these cables in black. Get around the other side here. Okay. Good. Oh, we've got to do the back end of these here. There we go. All right. So, now I think everything else is mostly dry, so we will grab some Nuln Oil. And we're just going to put this over... The silver, the red, I think, as well as the robes of the rider here. I'm going to start with the robes because that's what we painted the farthest back. And as you can see, that's just, we still have that kind of off white color, bony color, but it's just a little bit darker and more towards the gray end of things. And uh, I think it helps differentiate it from the from the mount more. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to get it back here. If it goes on the Gorgrunto, I'm not super worried about it. That's fine. Gorgrunto, null oil anyway, so. I am applying this pretty thick. Um, so I really want to make the distinction between the rider and the Mount. Let's come down here. I'm going to get it on the red as well. I really want to darken that down. We don't need... I want this red to be saturated, but, you know, we don't need it to be that saturated. It is still, like, a wasteland, so... Alright, that's good. And now I'm just going to get the lance here. I'm going to put it pretty heavy down here just because there's a lot of detail that we can fill in with this. There we go. Just like that. Got some armor down here on the leg. I think 
that should be good maybe right up there a little bit more there we go Alrighty. so now what i'm going to do is i don't so a lot of times when i'm looking at a miniature it's kind of hard to tell like when it's done if the base is still primer i'm not going to do the base on stream today because i don't know how i'm going to do it um, I do have a desert basing video if you want to go check that out. Um, it's one of the first videos on the channel, third or fourth maybe. Um, and that's probably how I'll do them. So if you're curious how I'm going to do them, check out that video. Um, but until I do that, I'm just going to take some snake bite leather and just cover the base with it. Just so I can see the miniature not next to a pile of primer, basically. Which is what this base is right now. I just want to see it next to a darker color. So I can know, you know, what miniatures sort of get a feel, or at least I get a feel for when the miniature is done. And it's really hard to tell when there's this big white shiny base under it. So just gonna cover it in snake bite leather. And uh, one of the first steps on that basing video is to paint the base brown, I believe. So uh, this will count as that first step also. Then you put some crackle paint down, then you blend that in with some texture paint. Let that dry, and you get this sort of mottled effect of cracking in some places and just dry ground in others. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. So... Now we can see the miniature next to a base instead of a next to the bright, shiny beacon of primer there. So now we can figure out what needs to be done, if anything, to the miniature. And what I think I'm going to do is take some blue horror, maybe? We'll go with blue horror. And I am just going to, very carefully, put a bunch of dots on this eye here. I'm not sure if it's meant to be one of these, like, crazy segmented eyes, like on flies. But it kind of looks like that to me. I mean, it's smooth. It doesn't have a pattern on it. But I'm going to paint it. I'm just going to put a bunch of dots in it to sort of simulate that sort of thing. Okay, there we go. And then I'll do it on the other side as well. That's good enough. Okay. So now it's just kind of look at the miniature, rotate the miniature, see what kind of additions it might need. And, you know, looking at this guy, he needs a second coat of Quellia on there. So we're going to do that. This carapace is just not jiving with the rest of the miniature for me. It's, um... It's too desaturated compared to the rest of the miniature. And a second coat, I think, will help quite a bit. So we're just going to put a second coat on. Um, if you liked how that first coat looked, and you're copying this paint scheme, again, I'm flattered. Uh, but, you know, just don't put the second coat on and you're all set. And ignore my comments about it not fitting with the rest of the miniature. You're like, you know what, Greg, you don't know what you're talking about. It looked awesome. Got some blue or green on the leg again. I'll flush that off in a second. Just want to finish the carapace first. You don't ever want to stop in the middle of a panel or anything with this color because, uh, or with contrast or washes in general. So you get a nasty line where it started to dry. Uh, but now I'm just going to get my paintbrush wet and come in here and just flood the area. There we go. And that spot is gone one. 
Alrighty. Well, we might be coming towards the end here. Just, uh, I'm sure there are a ton of other things I could do. It's just what other things do I actually want to do? What I am going to do is I'm going to, I did, um, Reichland Flush Shade earlier. I'm now going to use some Fire Slayer Flush, actually, and darken these talons or spikes, whatever they are. I want them to be just slightly more different than the rest of him. And this is just a couple couple shades down from Reichland. It's also more saturated than Reichland. I think that will help a lot. It does start to get similar to the Gorgrunta, but because we put Null Oil over the Gorgrunta, I think that will be enough of a difference to be okay. And then right here. And then the other half here. Oh, and the mandibles. I need to get them as well. And then the back of the mandibles. All right. So now I could uh, continue. And I will continue with one more thing. Um, but so we could do some silver edge highlights. Um, we could do some hatch marks on the cloth on the rider to make it more, like, beaten and battered. Could do all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to do two quick things. Uh, first with, what is this, Antares Red from Scale 75, just because that's the bright red that I happen to have on my desk here. Uh, Citadel equivalent would be Wild Rider. And I'm just going to... Do a couple little highlights on the red here. So I'm just going to find the edges and just do some rough highlights along here. Like that. And you could then go in after this with some orange, maybe some Troll Slayer. Or, no, probably Troll Slayer. And put in some little hatch marks, like I was talking about, around the tatters and stuff to give it some, some more punch. But I'm not worried about that for this level of paint job. I think we're, we're happy here. Um, but then the last thing I'm going to do is take some silver. This is plate metal, plate mail metal from Army Painter. Um, Citadel equivalent is Ironbreaker. And I'm just going to paint the teeth on the chain spear here. Chain lance. I don't want those teeth blending too much into the body of the lance itself because I want, you know, they're, they're whirring around. They're not a, they're not static there, so. Do that. And then I'm just going to paint in the eye lenses of the rider with this color. That'll do. I think that'll be good for now. So yeah, like I said, you could go in and keep doing several more things. You can always do more to our miniature. Um, but for this stream and this paint job, this will do just... Ah, oh, I keep saying that! And I see one more thing. Alright, Magus Purple... That goes purple. This uh, this wound here on the side of him. I'm just gonna put some Magos purple in and around it. There. All right. Now we're done for sure. So you can go in, do a bunch of other things if you want. But this is me done. Uh, like I said, if you want to see how I'm going to base him, uh, actually, let me just pull up my channel real quick and I'll tell you which video it is. Um. And I will link it in the description once this stream becomes a video. Um, but I believe it is the third or fourth video on the channel. If I go back and sort my oldest, it is... Oh, I was very wrong. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, it's the tenth video on the channel. 
It's called The Basics of Basing Desert Bases. That's how I'm going to do this guy's base. That's how I'm going to do all of Ash Waste's base. So if you're interested in that, go to see that video. Or if you're watching this in the future, there's a link in the description of this video. You can go check it out right now. But thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, I'm hoping to do another stream possibly tomorrow, but at least on Friday of some more Ash Waste guys, probably something Orlock just to balance it out. Um, but yeah, again, thanks for watching and I will see you guys on the next one.